Alrighty, in this video I'm going to show you how to replace an oxygen sensor. I was noticing that this van was idling pretty rough, so I'm like, hmm, let me plug in the, um, I have one of these OBD2 scan tools here. This is the blue driver. It's like a hundred bucks off Amazon. Very handy to be running codes on the fly, but I wasn't getting an engine code. Had no engine light or anything, so I looked to, at my live data, and as I'm looking through, everything's looking relatively okay, although I noticed right here, this O2 Bank 1 Sensor 2 auction sensor shows no voltage. Now, if an auction sensor goes bad, the engine does not know how good of a job it's doing whenever it's burning fuel. So it can idle kind of rough as it doesn't really know all the data of what's going on. Now, this van has three different sensors. You have Bank 1 Sensor 1, Bank 1 Sensor 2, and then Bank 2 Sensor 1. That's it. Now, the way the whole bank one and sensor one works is the bank refers to which side of the vehicle it's on. So if this phone here is the engine, this is the passenger side, this is the driver's side. Cylinder number one on my van is on the passenger side, which means that bank one's on the passenger side. So the way the exhaust works, there's a pipe that goes here over to the passenger side and then straight down to the back. And there's a pipe that goes off this side of the engine all the way down to the back. So they can join right here. So bank two, sensor one, is going to be the first sensor on the driver's side of the engine. And then bank one, sensor one, is going to be the first sensor on the passenger side of the engine. And remember, this pipe goes into here and then all the way back. This sensor all the way in the back is on bank one, the passenger side of the engine, but it's the second sensor, so it's sensor two. So whenever you're looking at your computer here, or your phone, it shows bank one, sensor one, and then bank one, sensor two, the sensor two shows no voltage. So obviously we know we either have a bad sensor or bad wiring going to that sensor. So what I did is I went ahead and I took out the sensor and that's right down here. It is a pain to get this out. If you're going to try to take this thing out, make sure you have enough strength to do so. I barely had enough and that was using a very large wrench that I had to borrow. Um, this thing, after 19 years of almost being rusted onto the exhaust pipe permanently. I mean, it's it's a pain to get these things off. It's very simple though. You just disconnect the quick connect and you unscrew it. Remember, righty tighty lefty loosey. This sits on the top of the exhaust pipe and I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. So if I'm looking down at it, it has to spin this way in order to loosen it. But if you're upside down, it looks like it's spinning to the right. It's not though. So when you're upside down, you have to spin it to your right because you're actually turning it left. Hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much, but anytime you're upside down, you have to turn to your right because that's really making it turn left. All right, so we're underneath the vehicle now. Now that's the front end right there. So there's that pipe that goes to the driver's side of the engine. And there's the pipe that goes to the passenger side. And then here's our big main catalytic converter. And I'm upside down, so pardon the shaky phone. Um, but here is the muffler, there is the back end of the catalytic converter, and right up here is where the oxygen sensor goes. So what we need to do is just plug in the new oxygen sensor, and um, uninstalling it is you know, the exact opposite of plugging it back in. Here's the new oxygen sensor, have that little protective cap to take off, and it just goes right up top here. Trying to hold the camera so you can best see that. And we just put it down in there and start turning it right to tighten it. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. All right, it looks like it's in there now. And now I'm just hand tightening it as best as I can. Allowing this cord to spin, because if you don't allow the cord to spin, you're gonna break the wires. So you have to allow this little thing to spin. And it's very difficult to even get under here, but thankfully there's some working room. All right, that is now just finger tightened for the time being. I'm going to loop this around one more time. And this little heat shield, I'm going to push it up towards the top end right over there. Um, that way there's as much heat protection on the top of the wires right here. Now, as far as where this end plugs into, I went ahead and um, popped this little guy out of here. 
you have to um, just push this heat shield pretty hard, which I guess at some point it got bent or something. And what you need to do is just take your little connection here, and it's a click connect. So you literally just pop it in and it'll click into position and you're good to go. Um, just pop that back behind the heat shield, start up the vehicle, and we'll see if we are getting data from this O2 sensor. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, tighten this a little bit more, but I'm gonna need two hands to do that, so I'm not gonna be able to show you that part, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You just unscrew the old one and screw the new one in and unplug the old one and these connections I've shown you before in previous videos how they work you just got to uh, push down and pull out so it's, it's uh, very easy to use uh, the sensor it is, it is buried away behind this heat shield if you stick your fingers up underneath though you'll immediately be able to feel it and you can also see where the um, wiring harness is clamped down so this one that can just pop into there and I am good to go all right, now that we're back inside, we have the engine running, looking at the data. We can see that bank two, sensor one, is reading. And bank one, sensor two, is not reading anything still. Despite the fact that we have a new sensor in. So that could mean that there is a wiring issue going to the sensor. Uh, if I had a multimeter, it, I could just check for that. Um, but, you know, unfortunately I don't. I'm just kind of throwing parts at it and seeing if I can fix it right now. So with that new oxygen sensor in place, um, you know, great, we, we have a new oxygen sensor, but that bank one sensor two is still not showing what it should be showing. And the data coming off both these oxygen sensors looks a little bit different. Um, as far as idling, we can see if we're using eight pounds of air per minute, pretty normal for one of these things. Our throttle position is, uh, a little bit high for my liking but good enough our timing advance is not necessarily smooth and that's kind of problematic that basically just lets you know that your engines idling rough um, it has to change the timing just ever so slightly depending on the rpm of the engine and we can see there's the rpm down there and it is relatively consistent it's not like it's it's um, shaking or rattling it's just making a little slight vibration that that I can feel. There's the calculated engine load value that's basically showing you how much load is on the engine. So, for example, if I turn on my AC, let's turn on the AC unit. You notice that that popped up from 23% to now it's at about 25.5%. Once I turn off the AC, it immediately drops. So the more work you have on the engine, the higher that calculated load value is going to be. Uh, right now, you know, it's just sitting at around 23.9. That's pretty typical, pretty low. The RPM is, is, is nice and low at um, 6 point or uh, 600 and we'll say about 30. Uh, now, fun fact, if your air filter is all plugged up, that calculated engine load value is going to be a little higher because the engine is going to have to struggle to try to pull in air. So if you're noticing that your vehicle is just really sluggish for no apparent reason, check your air filter. Sometimes just a bad air filter can be the cause. But if I give the engine a little bit of rev, you can see my throttle position went from 18 to 20 percent and we're still getting no, no data. And it's nice and smooth when the engine is being revved. It's 1,018 or 1,800 RPM at 20% calculated load value. And we're just sitting in park right now. Throttle position at 20%. Two pounds air per minute and everything seems to be just fine. But he had absolutely no data coming for that sensor. So uh, we're gonna have to look into now wiring to see if there is a issue with our wiring going to the sensor. Maybe there's a short somewhere, or it could be that one of the wires is disconnected from the quick connect on that sensor. Unfortunately, it is too hot for me to now work on this thing 
So I just have to turn it off and um, let it cool down again, and then I can come back and work at this at, on a later date. And just to give you an idea of just how hot the exhaust is, we're going the front passenger side of the wheel here, and let's take the temperature of the exhaust manifold. So after just idling it for just a little bit, we're already at 360 degrees. Obviously that's way too hot to touch. So just be very careful, even if you idle for a short amount of time, that does not necessarily mean that you can just go ahead and start touching things on the exhaust. I can feel the heat on my hand. So it's 112 on the heat shield. Let's test the pipe itself. 250 degrees. Test that one. 161, 170, but we're a little too far away for it. The heat shield is 91. That joint right there, 190 degrees. So yeah, there's no way we can work on this thing right now, even though we just had it idle for just a short amount of time. So be very careful when going back to working on an exhaust after running the engine. It'll heat up a lot faster than you realize. Unfortunately, I was not able to fix my issue, but if you were wondering how to replace an oxygen sensor, I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about uh, things related to Ford Econ Lines, and I'll have to update you whenever I find out a fix to this issue. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments.